Hey, look. I've always, like, kept my criminal aspect, criminality out of the picture on my YouTube channel. Um, because, like, I really wanted to to rewrite my own story so that people would know me and my kids would understand me without all the streets, without the hype, without jails, prison, without, you know, guns and fighting and thugging it and doing that other foolishness. But I was challenged, man. I've been getting this challenge for a while. And folks saying, hey, man, the world really need to hear your story. Share your story so that other people can can grow. And my rebuttal was that I didn't really want my kids to know the extent of my involvement in the streets, uh, in the streets. So I didn't want them to know, you know, like what I was doing, what I was into. It's bad enough they had to come visit me in prison for all those years. Then to turn on and turn on YouTube and just play the tracks and hear what I was doing, hear the story. But bro said that, you know, people can grow from it. In all actuality, if my kids ain't in it yet, they probably not gonna get in it. My daughter, she going on 24, a son going on 18, another son going on 15. So like, I was challenged this morning. He said, man, people need to know. They wanna know what it was like, what you went through, but just another YouTube station with the black man talking about penitentiary experiences was never really impressing to me. It wasn't ever, wasn't nothing that I ever really wanted to do, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay it out. Um, and comment below, tell me some stories you wanna hear. Just as a br brief overview, uh, sucks. I went to prison at 18, came home at 23. No, I came home at 22, I'm about to turn 23. Then I caught a case. So let me say the years then. I went home, I went to prison in 1998. Came home in 2002, at the end of 2002. All right. And I was faking, faking the phone, act like I wasn't hustling, but I had got, I had got back into selling dope. I'm gonna tell the story to deal with it. Y'all drop a comment if y'all wanna hear the story of how I got back into selling dope. But anyway, I caught a case again in 2005. But I got a lawyer and beat it because they couldn't direct indict me. And when I beat that case, I messed around and, um, well, the, the, the judge wouldn't, wouldn't indict it to the grand jury, so they had to go for a direct indictment. But I don't know if y'all know about law, but you can't be tried two times for the same crime, but you can be indicted twice. So the first indictment didn't go through. So when my lawyer let me, when, when my lawyer walked me back from the courthouse, he told me, say, hey man, my advice for you is to be somewhere hard to find. So I went on the lamb, I went on the run. By the time the sun came up the next day, I was in a whole nother state. They didn't know what I was gonna do. This is in 2005, 25 years old. I was a fugitive. I was on federal probation. So I became a federal fugitive and a state of Virginia fugitive. Oh man, I ain't even gonna run this big. I'm gonna just take it like a man, stop. But uh, I was a fugitive from 2005 to 2010. Are right, you following these years? In prison from 98 to 02, fugitive from 05, 2010 um just watched a lot happen man i grew up on the run or either in prison so as obama got in the office i started thinking like as a black man maybe i could do something more with my life and in 2010 i called 911 on myself that's where i should start at i called 911 on myself in 2010 turned myself in got sentenced to six years ten months which brought me to 2016. The end of 2016, that's when I came home from prison. So I got a lot of stories I'm gonna share with you. Yeah, it was wild. And so when I turned myself in, I turned myself in in Louisville, Kentucky. I think that's gonna be an interesting story. I'm gonna tell you what happened when I turned myself in, when I went to jail. I don't know if y'all ever been to Louisville. 
But that jail be on first 48. It's a serious spot. Like, it's serious. And they, they doing everything in Louisville. So I went in there knowing what it is and what I had to do. And that was uh that was the start of my journey. I self-surrendered. Wanted to get my life together. Hello. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna share this story. Hopefully some people can grow, somebody will benefit. I am not glorifying the streets. I'm not saying do this. I'm hoping that you will listen to me and realize how screwed up and how messed up it was and how much potential I wasted, how many years I wasted in the streets, man. I can't get none of them years back. Came home, 2016, that Drake drop, looking for revenge, all summer 16. And my man, he put me on with a security gig, I borrowed a truck, then I met my wife. And it just been working, first time really applying myself to work like this. So, follow me with this journey. I don't want y'all to respect me for this street stuff, I want y'all to respect me for the man that I've become for the father, the son, the husband, you know, the dad, the friend, the leader in my community. That's what I want respect for, but you want it? Stay tuned. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm also looking for some business partners because like with my drive and the stuff I was doing, the work I was putting in, what I got in for it now, what I'm doing with my business, <laughs> if I can meet the old me, if your son is like similar to the old me and have a business mind, need a chance out, that's how I can really help. But hey, Mecca, hey, Trey, hey, Life, hey, Larry, this is the story. All right. Maybe you should know. If you don't want to hear about it, tune out. But this is about to be a journey, a little vlog, you no. Know, she might not make sense to a lot of y'all, but shit, I lived it. So stay heavily motivated, stay humble, sit down, tune in tomorrow.